Okay, welcome everybody to another episode of Sports Card Madness. This is LZ and I am here with Nick. And today we have a guest. Our guest today is Jenny Marie from Jenny Marie Sports Cards. She is also a hobby enthusiast. She is now a podcast host and we want to hear about that. And then finally, uh, most importantly, Jenny is a U.S. Air Force veteran. So, Jenny, welcome to the show. We're very happy to have you on today. Yeah, welcome. Hi, Jenny. everyone. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm honored. I really, really am. Oh, Appreciate yeah, it. absolutely. You know, we're we're honored. Uh, we're very excited to have you on. Uh, Nick and I have been following you on Instagram for for a while now. You're a mover and a shaker, a hustler, and you have a very interesting collection as well. And we're going to get into all that. Uh, but to start off, I we we just want to hear about your origin, like your origin story. Like, how did you get into collecting? If you could just start there, why why are you doing this? Okay, so I grew up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Um, I know some of kind some have heard my story a little bit, but um, my dad was an avid collector. A lot of junk wax, a lot of junk <laughs> wax. But um, you know that was we didn't really have hobby shops. So he would get on, he drove a beer truck and he would get on his truck and he'd go to different taverns and things like that. And they would trade there and he'd bring cards back and we'd lay on his floor and we'd go through them, you know, with the Beckett books and looking at, you know, all the prices, put the little garage sale stickers on them with the prices on, you know, in the, in the binders and stuff. And uh, so that's my earliest memory is with my dad, the, uh, Police cars also used to roll up in the neighborhoods and they would hand out Milwaukee Brewer cards. So that was pretty cool. So that was always something, a big deal for me to run down the stairs and go grab them and bring them up to my dad. And I mean, I wish they still did something like that because that is so cool. Um, a, a story that I really haven't shared a lot about my dad's cards. So my dad and I had kind of an odd relationship as I grew up. And um, when he passed away, I sold all his cards for very, very, <laughs> very cheap. Because mind you, I got out of the hobby for a very long period of time, became mm. a mom, a grandma, you know, Air Force work, and it wasn't a priority. So I just sold like boxes and boxes and boxes of cards. Oh, and what year? What year was this? I mean, I'm telling you, a lot of it was junk wax, to be fair. So mm. this would have been maybe 15 years ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But... Now that I'm back in the hobby, it breaks my heart because I think, you know, somebody got a really, really sweet deal and I could have had the, all those cards to share with my husband and we, mm -hmm. you know, could go through them together and kind of continue my dad's legacy. So oh, very do you sad. remember? Do you remember any cards in particular? And if so, have you tried to at least find those to add to your collection? So I've actually started collecting a lot of Brewers cards, Paul Molitor for one, mm -hmm. uh, Raleigh Fingers, trying to, you know, trying to get those up. Um, my dad had everything. So trying to remember specific cards, no, but the memories, yes, I'm mm -hmm. trying to add them back to my collection. It's really That's important. Great. And those are, and those are my biggest memories of the Brewers. So, you know, just trying. Nice. And you, you know, have children. Yeah. You have children. You have grandchildren. Are I do. Are you getting your grandchildren into collecting? So my four-year-old granddaughter is granddaughter. actually a Pokemon girl. So uh, uh, a bunch of people have sent me Pokemon cards for her recently, and just trying to ignite that fire. You mm -hmm. know, really see. I mean, she's four, so just trying to see if she has the passion. So far, she's enjoying it. So I want to get one slabbed up for her. And, you know, the Pikachu is her favorite. So I figure I'll send one away with my next PSA order and get one slabbed up for her. So she has her first slab. And yeah. And my Love other it. ones are, are are tiny, tiny. So not yet. Yeah. But I am trying to ignite some fire with her. My children are not into it. They're into me doing it. They they support me. They they watch, you know, my podcast and all those things, but they are just not into sports cards. No. Do they think you're cool for having a podcast? Or <laughs> yeah, could they, could, I think they they do? <laughs> you my would have kids to ask care them. less. My kids could care less. Oh no. they they yeah. are there supporting me. Um my my daughter's about to, my youngest daughter's about to get married and her and her fiance jump on our podcast and they're, you know, commenting. 
and my oldest daughter and her husband, my husband, uh, her husband actually created an Instagram account just so he could watch. So, oh, cool. I mean, yeah, I think they think I'm cool and that I'm on a podcast, but you'd have to ask them because they may okay. be pretending for all you I are, know. You are cool, Jenny. I, I think you're cool. Oh, so okay. I, mean, I got good. dinosaurs on my sweater. Yeah, right? so for those on audio, she's got a very vibrant pink dinosaur shirt with various dinosaurs all over yes. it. Mm -hmm. And yes. it's uh, it's just lovely. It's like, mm -hmm. it's Thank really you. nice. <laughs> so, Jenny, um, you know, one of the reasons that we were really interested in having you on, you know, the military is a big thing for, for me and LZ and uh, leading up to Memorial day, we wanted to kind of feature veterans in the hobby, which is kind of an interesting path. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering if you could just tell me a little bit about, I know you served in the air force. If you could just tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about your time there and it, did you collect anything while serving or did you go overseas and collect there? Like, what was that all about? So I wasn't collecting at that time. I didn't start collecting again until I married my husband, um, which was about seven years ago. Um, that's a whole nother story we'll roll into. But uh, military wise, I mean, I grew up in Fort Hood, Texas, which is now Fort Cavazos. Um, so I grew up an army brat. And, um, you know, I, I know there were trading cards out there. And my husband actually has a few Desert Storm cards, which is cool because that's a neat memory for us. We were uh, probably in junior high, I think, at the time. And uh, I remember our junior high school, you know, sending like postcards to the soldiers, things like that for support. But I wasn't into collecting then. Um, you know, that didn't start till recently. So, Interesting. yeah. Um, I remember those cards very, very well. I think we're probably about the same age. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I remember those packs of cards and I was like, oh, these mm -hmm. are cool. And you could get them for like, I mean, gosh, it was like 20 cents yeah. at the convenience store. Mm -hmm. but yeah. I think I posted one the other day. It was, uh, uh, a, a I don't remember who it was. It was one of the generals I posted, but I didn't know my husband even had them in his stash. And I was like, this is so awesome. Like yeah. totally unique, but yeah, yeah so I kind of wish I would have, you know, collected back then. I think there would have been a lot of neat things to have. Mm -hmm. I think sure. we LZ, was it you that shared a reel with me? And it was it was about those cards, and it was hilarious because it was like this general's rookie card, Saddam Hussein's rookie card, and like oh, a bunch of stuff was. like that. Yes. And I was dying yes. laughing. Yeah, it was all their rookie uh, cards. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Oh man, that's too funny. Yeah, um, that was actually was... one of the first sets that I dusted off during the pandemic. I went up into the attic, pulled out everything, and I actually had. I didn't have the full set, but I probably had like 90% of the cards. And it was like one of the first things I pulled out because I was showing my kids. And I remember like just explaining that to them. They're like, wait a minute. Like we went to war and there were <laughs> cards about the war. Like what? Yeah. They just couldn't, yeah. couldn't believe it. So yeah, there's, it's definitely vivid memory there. Um, that's cool. So I'm glad you brought up your husband. So we uh -huh. did have a chance to catch up before the show. Right. And you you were just talking about your relationship with your husband, and I find it to be very cool because it sounds like both, I mean, you've already mentioned it, that both of you are into collecting. And I don't know how many relationships are really out there where both partners are, are into collecting. Uh, so it would be just really cool. Like, did you both, like, did you meet and you were both collectors on your own and then you got together and you're like, wow, this is this is amazing. Or did one do it before the other? Like, how did that all come about, just both of you getting into this hobby? It is a crazy story. So I think okay. just like with everyone else with COVID and sitting around and being bored, um, my husband actually started getting back into it, pulled out all his cards, all his comic books, everything. And he was spending an ungodly amount of time on cards and videos and I was bored. I was so bored. And I'm just sitting there, you know, twiddling my thumbs like, what is going on? Like, pay attention to me. So I came up with the whole concept. I was like, listen, what if we do this together? Right? Because then I would get that attention. So he was sure. Why not? And, you know, I started watching videos, you know, paying attention to like Mojo sports and everything that he was watching on YouTube and really educating myself. And um, we came up with initially the idea of, me kind of being the face behind his collection. But then it became 
my collection because I started buying. I started wanting to go to the card shows and I got that fire and that passion underneath me. So I was like, all right, now I got the Zion case. I got my PC. And so now he's basically riding my coattails, you know, because <laughs> I, oh. I have ran with it. <laughs> you lapped him. You completely lapped him. I love it. Yeah, yeah. And he uh he he goes through my case like every day. He's like, it's so heavy. I'm like, yes. Yes, it is. Yes, I'm very <laughs> proud of my collection. So, um, I mean, it's been it's been fun. It, it just, like I said, it was kind of a selfish reason um, because I mm. was bored and lonely that I came up with the idea to get into it. But once I did, it's you know, I think because it was instilled in me from such a young age that it just came right back and all those memories. And that's what it is. I mean, mm. it's it's memories. It's everything. And now look at all the memories I'm creating with him. You know what I mean? That's so, so cool. it's it's amazing. It's so much it's fun. It's the nostalgia. It's the nostalgia. Yeah. And I love, we just talked about it, right? I love the fact that you're getting your granddaughter into it because she will remember doing mm -hmm. this with her grandmother. So when she mm -hmm. is in her, well, let's call it 30s, right? who knows? Maybe she'll move away from it, but then maybe she'll get back into it because of the nostalgia. So And have that's, those memories. That's great. Yeah. Yes. yes. So you, you definitely... You're, you're like the, you trump him now, right? Your husband. It's like, Absolutely. You're the, you're yes. like the, you got a podcast, yes. you got all these Instagram followers, you're going to card shows, you're meeting, you're meeting everybody. So yeah, I know, I know. On that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's been crazy. I think, I think I skipped completely over the question about the military though. Did y'all want to like, want me to tell a little story or I yeah mean, love, i mean i love stories let's hear a story oh just, yeah I, for sure yeah i just talked about the cards but i didn't yeah. actually like get into let's, let's hear it okay so um I, I know i started it with i grew up on fort hood so that that mm -hmm. passion for the military was always there that that just that seeing the 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 team seeing the people together seeing the family the military family and just having that um, in front of me at all times, uh, made me always want it. Now I started having children super duper early. I was 18 when I had my first and plans changed. I went to nursing school, you know, I followed a totally different path. So at about 31 years old, I drove past the national guard base and thought, I mean, it's probably too late. I'm really, really, really old. Right. And uh, my ex-husband, <laughs> I know, I, I wish I was 31 now. Uh, my ex-husband at the time was like, you know, why don't you go talk to a recruiter? I'm like, really? And I had three small children. I think my youngest was probably maybe seven or eight and my oldest, mm -hmm. maybe 14. Um, I went to go talk to an Air Force recruiter and um, took the ASVAB and uh, did really, 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 really well and was told I could basically have any job I wanted in the Air Force. So I asked them oh. what the shortest tech school was because I had children at home. And so he said vehicle operator, which is a truck driver, forklift driver, you know, bus driver. It's the driver, right? And I was like, cool, mm -hmm. let's do it. So I enlisted, I went to basic training at 32 years old in San Antonio, Texas. Hardest thing, but most amazing thing I've ever done my entire life. Cried when I left because I was so sad to leave it. Um, went to tech school, came back mm. home. And you know now I think the biggest part of that entire story is I'm the kind of girl who doesn't like having regrets. I don't wanna be that little old lady in my rocking chair someday going, well, I wonder what it would have been like, or should I, you know, should I have done it? Or what, what would have happened if I would have tried it? And so mm -hmm. that's, that's really how I live my life. And, you know, now I can look in my closet, see my uniform, see my boots, think about my, you know, my military family and, and, and all the experiences that I had. And I'm like, yes, you know, score, I did it. So, you know, that's, that, that's who I am as a person is, you know, always setting those little weird random goals for myself and achieving them. And even if I fail, it's okay. Cause I tried. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, sometimes Love in it. life, you just got to show up. I mean, you were just like, Hey, let's just go see what I can do there. And then look what yeah. happened. Right. You had this great experience and um, now it's such a huge part of the fabric of your life. So yes, that's really Very much. Awesome. So I got my education. I mean, so many things good came out of that. And I'm, I'm so thankful that that is a part of my life. Yes. So Jenny, well, Jenny thank you for your service. Yeah. Yeah. Thank off. you. Thank you.
thank no, you for volunteering I'm honored. and I'm honored. stepping up. Yeah. <laughs> so Jenny, you've got a, a pretty pretty awesome collection. So I follow you. I almost can't keep up with the um <laughs> the different stuff you have. So I mean, I guess eclectic is the best way to put it because mm -hmm. you've got you've got some modern and you like Jordan love and you know, that type of stuff. And then you've got some vintage stuff with Ernie Banks. You got some superhero stuff. You mm -hmm. really got like everything. And now you've got, you know, grandchildren into Pokemon. So <laughs> I just was, I was wondering if you could just talk about your collection a little bit and be like, maybe what's the favorite chunk of it or why is it so eclectic? Okay. So the only way that can truly be explained is I'm very ADHD. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the big part of it. I, my brain's always working, thinking, changing. And so that's probably why a lot of it is so different. Um, now with the Ernie Banks or like the Black Hall of Famers, that was uh, basically started by my husband. Um, it was a very big deal to him to start collecting all the uh, tops Ernie Banks cards and all the Black Hall of Famers. So a, a chunk of that is, you know, was started by my husband and then continued by us together. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when we're going to the Dallas card show, he, you know, we bring out our little list of what cards we still need or what cards we're wanting for that collection. And, and, and that's how we do that. But the modern have been fun. I, I've enjoyed so much, you know, just recently in Austin going through dollar boxes and pulling out, you know, the Gunnar Henderson's and the Josh Young's. Oh, poor Josh. And, uh, you know, stuff like that and, and, and pulling it into my collection too. But I actually brought my favorite card. It's my favorite of oh, all time. All right. So yes. for those on audio, this is uh, a Bo Jackson card. He yes. was he was the man. All right. So if you if you had Tecmo Tecmo Bowl as a kid, he was a cheat code. You just beat the game with him. He was awesome. Yeah. And, Tecmo, uh, yes. football ball. So it's yeah. the card mm -hmm. with him holding the bat with the um the bat that he broke on his leg many times. What uh, what yes. um is that a scorecard? What year is that? It is 1994. 1990. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and I you used got to it have graded. The, I, what I grade did you get? Poster. Oh, you have a 10. A 10. Yeah. Nice. Oh, nice. I bought, wow. I bought like four 1990 score boxes just to pull those cards. I mean, just That's to get cool. those cards. Yeah. Yeah. I nice. was, yeah. And it so was you pulled the 10. You pulled the 10 out of there. I did. Yeah. Cool. I, did. I, I pulled two 10s and, and, and a nine. We got three graded. So, nice. yeah. Sold That's one awesome. 10, kept one 10, sold a nine. Yep. So he's signing. Is there any thoughts of, of getting a signature on one of those? There's always thoughts of getting oh, a signature. Oh, yeah. He's signing yes. right now. It would yeah. be amazing. Is I know. Doing I a, is that. it a public Is it a public signing or a mail-in signing? I, I uh, think they're doing both, a, aren't they? I think it's a mail-in. Yeah, there's, it's a mail-in. Well, I was mm -hmm. just thinking how cool would it be to like hand him that card, you know? It's right. Although it's a 10, I wouldn't do the 10. You know, you got to no. crack that out, you know. I know, <laughs> I know. But it's always cool yeah. when you meet a player. Um, some of my favorite autograph cards, they could be sloppy, they could be whatever, but it's the ones that got done in person. Like I actually mm -hmm. handed them the card. I was actually thinking about that the other day because you know I have a I I have a Josh Young auto that I got and it's actually at PSA right now for grading. And I have yet I, I've met Josh Young. I have never been brave enough to ask him for a signature and now he's injured. I'm kind of hoping that he will come to Round Rock Express to recover and that's right down the road so I can watch him and I could actually get an autograph from him. Because to yes. me, that means so much more than buying the auto because yeah. it's that experience. So that's, that's oh, like yeah. one of my next goals. We'll see. You're going to make it happen. I, I can uh, see definitely will make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially bring you bring your granddaughter along and you'll, right. you'll get an autograph. Yeah. <laughs> bring him bring him some daughter. flowers, some chocolates, whatever helps him recover. And then yeah. uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. He's he he's always watching my stories, you know, and I'm oh. like, oh, let's I'm gonna I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna set it up. He's gonna know who I am when I'm standing in front of him. <laughs> this is gonna happen. We're, we might help it make will. this happen. All right. It is. It is. Yes. You bring up a good point though. I, every time I tell a story about an autograph it's it's always the in-person ones i talk about jason yeah. tatum and i talk about luca and mm -hmm. uh we had walt frazier on the show at one point and and walt's got that one in person and yeah it's just you, you want the story so yeah that's, right right because yeah. i mean i understand the auto from like a a financial perspective but mm. that's not why i'm collecting so mm. to buy the auto to me is a little bit different than actually having that experience and yeah, getting to achieve that yeah. yes exactly yeah, yes. exactly. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that 
Uh, Jenny is, she's kind of all over IG. She's doing a really good job. She's got a lot of followers. Uh, me and Nick both follow her. And it's really been this like rise in like a short amount of time. And it's one of the reasons why Nick and I wanted to talk to you <laughs> because we want to understand like your secret sauce. Like you're, you're there, like you're posting pictures, shaking hands with everybody. You're, it's just, you do a really, really good job. So how have you had this rise so quickly? What's your okay. secret? So first off, we'll start with, I do have a bachelor's degree in marketing. Um, <laughs> thank you. There Air you Force. Go. There you go. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. So, um, I think, you know, honestly, I am a very introverted guy person what? who Whoa. learned a lot in speech class. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have to watch your video back and you, you, uh, you know, you're shaking and your knees are shaking, but you watch the video and you're not actually shaking and you're like, wow, okay. I don't look that bad. So, um, you know, speech class taught me well, I, I have just really had to get myself out there and be brave going to the card shows, going up and introducing myself to people. Um, you know, it's been less than a year that I've had the, this Instagram and I'm about to do my giveaway for 3000 followers, which is blows my mind. Cause I go back to my first reel where I had 500, I think. And a lot of those 500 followers were inorganic because I probably followed them and they followed me back. So mm -hmm. it was kind of cheating. Right. Um, but I look back at that video and I'm like how far I've come. So, I mean, just, just really being able to, it, be brave enough to talk to people, get to know people, be, be yourself, like a hundred percent. It doesn't matter if I'm ridiculous or, or, or kind of dumb sometimes or wearing my dinosaur sweater, just being myself <laughs> and, and not trying to, to appease everybody, not trying to, you know, I mean, and stay away from drama. I think that's the biggest thing. Staying away from drama. Yes. Um, I really haven't had any big drama. I haven't had any creepy people pop into my DMs. So that's been great. <laughs> this entire thing has been a really positive experience so far. So um I'm I'm enjoying it and 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 I'm I'm proud to be someone who speaks up for women in the hobby. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping some of the women in the hobby that may be closeted or afraid to to you know be a part of it because they're afraid they won't have the respect that maybe, you know, a man would have in the male dominated hobby. I, I think, I hope this helps. I hope mm -hmm. they get out there and they speak up and they start posting and it's fun. Yeah. Well, so I think should, for you, go. sorry, Nick, for, for you, Jenny, when I look at you, I, I see you as like a really genuine person in the hobby. Right. So I think that's probably why you've had a positive experience right now. I think most people, or a lot of people, can like read through the BS. And if they mm -hmm. see somebody who's just like trying to create an Instagram account to like hawk a product, like right. you eventually you read into that BS, but yeah. you, you, you are all in on the hobby. So yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank yeah, you. Just... So what's really interesting for me, and this is very good advice. So from my perspective, I see you everywhere. You're at all the shows. You're meeting people. You're always smiling, very positive. Uh, you're you're wheeling and dealing. You're showing off your collection. It's just all good vibes. I had no idea that you were introverted. So for somebody <laughs> out there, as, especially mm -hmm. like, you know, if, if you're a woman in the hobby, it doesn't, I mean, either way, if you're introverted and you feel like you have some cool stuff to share, like in your mm -hmm. collection, just do it because, you, you know, look how well it's gone for you. You know, it's just a great lesson. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you just got to get yourself out there and you just, you got to be brave about it. You got, you know, and, and, and that's the thing is I'm very honest about things when I don't know things or I don't, I mean, you know how long it took me to figure out different parallels and, and understand all that. <laughs> yeah. And I can tell you, I still don't know so much stuff. Like I'm so nervous when people throw questions at me or on my podcast, I'm like, what if I look like a dumb girl? Right. But the reality is I'm learning every day, just like you guys are just like everybody else is. there's new things, there's changes all the time. So I mean, it's constantly growing. So just, mm -hmm. you know, you just got to continue to educate yourself and, and be a part of it all and, and surround yourself with it to an extent. So that way you have that knowledge and you, you know, have yeah. that respect. Yeah. And, and mo most everything I've learned in the hobby is from people like you, right? It's just reaching out to people, asking questions, being polite. So 
you know, to anybody. Don't be intimidated by this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And no drama. No drama. No drama. No drama. Stay away from the drama. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which kind of leads into oh, the next this... question. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we we had Kurt's card care on our show. We actually did a two part episode because it was just mm-hmm. like, unbelievably cool the stuff he does and yeah his, his family business and um and how he sell people i love what he does and i think it's it's fascinating and there's been mm-hmm. a lot of stuff happening with you know can you clean a card is that okay does psa think it's okay can you alter a card is cleaning altering i was just curious if you had any perspective on this at all you know have you ever cleaned something do you care at all you know what do you think about the whole thing So before we submit to PSA, of course, we always, always check our cards over, you know, with a fine tooth comb, with magnifying glass, with, you know, wiping them down um, with a a, a towel, you know, just shining them up real nice. Um, Now, when it comes to vintage, a lot of times, you know, our vintage is for our collection. Um, So we're not so much concerned about the grade we get back. Um, and, and, and things like that, just basically getting in a slab, having it protected and having it for our collection. But of course I shine them up a little bit, you know, and things like that before I send them to PSA. Um, I mean, I did see your recent post about like that card being pulled, uh, off. Mm. And so, you know, Jeff Wilson, who I know has been surrounded in drama too recently, um, he said something the other day that really hit home to me. And, you know, our cards are our art. They are art forms. They are just like if you had a canvas of a, of the Mona Lisa and it, and it, and it needs some cleaning up. It needs some brightening up. It needs to, to show that former glory, that, that beauty. I see nothing wrong with it. I mean, I, now when you're talking about altering, like trimming, you know, obviously changing yeah. the centering, uh, things like that. No, I think that is a no brainer, but mm-hmm. Just to bring a beautiful card back to its former glory, uh, to be appreciated for a longer period of time in the future, why not? That's yeah. my opinion. I hear you. Yeah. You know, we got we're into the nineteen eighty six Fleer stuff, right? And there's there's gum on those cards all the time. Like, so you're telling me you want me to just slab it with the gum? Like, <laughs> I mean, that's cool and nostalgic, but like, I right. want the gum off. And it's yeah, not very, it's course. not very the hard wax, to get off. It's the like, wax right. off of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like one set of yeah. pantyhose, you know, like three minutes and it's gone. Oh, can't do that. Right. You know? So yeah, no. I'm in, uh, I'm in violent agreement with you. I think. Uh, yes. And there's know. been a lot of other analogies out there, right? We mentioned the fine art. If you're going to sell a car or even get a car appraised for an auction, you're going to wax the car. Mm-hmm. You're going to vacuum mm-hmm. it. And you're when you're selling your house, <laughs> you're going to vacuum and clean your house. Yeah. Maybe you yes. a few walls. You're right. going to do that. Yes. Press, pressure yeah. wash the, you know, the outside, mm-hmm. like, you know, that type of stuff. Makes yeah. yeah. Same yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. Same thing. I agree. Yep. Yeah. Well, you actually have, have talked about this on your own podcast, which is the mm-hmm. every other week card show, um, cardboard card show. Sorry. Um, but Jenny, tell us about, this podcast uh we want to hear about it we want you to give some other hosts with you as well so tell the tell the audience about what's going on there all right so we are i am one third of the every other week cardboard show um how that started was samuel had an idea to uh, approach the hobby from three different perspectives he had reached out to roland with fd And Roland with FD, I had met at Cards HQ recently and became very close with. And I think it was his wife who actually said, how about you reach out to Jenny as that third person? Because how cool would that be? Just that's a totally different perspective, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So he reached out to me and I jumped on board. Uh, We've, we just finished up our fourth episode on Instagram live. It, it, it has grown also. It is fun. We, you know, we have, like our, we show our PC card of the week. We talked about collectors on the rise. So we try to give shout shout outs to new collectors. Um, we have a cardboard battle, which I am extremely competitive about. And I actually lost yep. last week. Um, <laughs> what, but, you, lost, you finally lost? I did. You were I on a winning streak. So I showed my, I showed my Jordan Love. Oh, um, okay. In his college uniform, of course. One of my mm. favorite cards. So, and um, I think Samuel threw up some vintage and he he took it so, I so have how, to does, how does the cardboard battle work um so we just randomly pick 
whatever card we want to battle with for the week. And then after our podcast, you know, we basically take votes for that 24 hours that your story is up. People can go vote. Oh, um, okay. And then whoever gets the most votes at the end, at, at the end of the 24 hours is the winner. And um, I think right now I'm still in the lead, but you know, I might have to pull out some more vintage because I, I like that. That's really cool. Um, it's fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking like, oh yeah, I have this. Oh yeah, I have this, but now it's more like you're locked in and there's votes. So that yeah. makes yes. sense. And yes. that's the power of using Instagram. So, Live, so the right? people, yeah. the people get to decide who has the it. most fire mm. card. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That way we have everybody interacting and being a part of our show. So, yeah. um, you know, we, we, uh, we're having a lot of fun with it. It is an amazing show. I, I've got new family now because of it. So it, it has been a blast. I like yeah, rolling I, with FD particularly. He's just a fun dude to watch. I've been on his channel a, a decent yeah. amount lately, and he's a cool guy. Mm. I was telling him the other day, I was he was actually my first podcast that I was on, was just his. Yeah. And so when I, we were FaceTiming the other day, I was like, isn't it crazy? Like how I was, you know, you were my first podcast that I was on and now we're in a podcast together. It's, it's so weird. I mean, that, and that was probably only like three months ago that I was on his podcast and now we're running a podcast together. So. And it's great because the three of you have really good chemistry together too. So I think there's a lot of success wait waiting for the Thank three Thank you. Of you. I yeah. appreciate really that. Yeah. yeah. They, they are my family now. Yes. It's positive, which is, which is great. And it's, uh, you know, you're doing these cool bits like the the, mm -hmm. the battles and whatnot. So, yeah. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. It's great. Awesome. All right, Jenny, we're going to have some fun now. Um, so I had a question about Wonder Woman because yes. I noticed it's kind of part of your PC. It's not only part of your PC. It's it's your logo. Um, yes. You know, it's it's kind of you as Wonder Woman, which is which is so cool. So what is that all about? Where did that come from? <sighs> well, we will go back to the seven-year-old picture of me where I am in my <laughs> Wonder Wonder Woman underoos over yes. my dress because I got them for my birthday. So Wonder Woman, I am not, you know, I, I, I've I always been a Wonder Woman girl. Um, and I kind of told you guys how I live my life. So a lot of my friends have always, you know, called me Wonder Woman, things like that, just with the Air Force and everything else and all my goal setting. So um, it just stuck with me when I had to make my logo. Why not make it a Wonder Woman-y logo? My closet, um, I moved my husband out of our master bedroom closet. We have three other rooms, so he <laughs> has access to three other closets. So I, I, I kicked him out of my closet and I have, you know, my entire collection of Wonder Woman pops. I have I have everything. I have a Wonder Woman candy bar. I have Wonder Woman clock. I have Wonder Woman stock. I mean, anything that was Wonder Woman is all in that closet. So I am a Wonder Woman girl. Yes. This, this is exactly <laughs> how. So if you aren't married and you're listening, this is exactly how marriage works. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just, yes. you know, if you're if you're thinking about getting married, yes, yeah, you can get kicked prepared. out. You can get yes. kicked out of your closet. And that is fair game. Mm -hmm. Make sure I mean, there's why a backup not? closet. Seriously, we're empty nesters. We have three other bedrooms. He can have those closets. Mm -hmm. And he does. Right. He has like his work clothes in one. And the other one is like his, you know, but he's got closets. He's got more than I do. I just have a bigger one. Is is the Wonder Woman? Is that always on your list when you go to shows, just to look for some new cool whatever it is, a card or collectible? It is, but it yeah. is so hard to find Wonder Woman cards at shows. I mean, mm. I ask constantly, and and it it's 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 frustrating. And then you'll have the person that you know, like you know start showing you the Marvel, and you're like, whoa, wrong universe. <laughs> like, no, I don't want Marvel. No, yeah. <laughs> well, I will be on the lookout for you when I start going to Thank shows. Thank you. I definitely yeah. will. Yeah, I absolutely. appreciate that. And yeah. I take anything Wonder Woman. It doesn't matter. I have a melted candy bar. I'm telling you. Walmart was, had the, <laughs> the DC candy bars and I saw a Wonder Woman one. And by the time I got it home, it was a little melted. It is sitting up there on my shelf. All melted and all. Yes. Oh, that's classic. Throw, <laughs> maybe throw it in the freezer every once in a while to kind of right? get, get it back together. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's what cool. If the, uh, is the original Wonder Woman still alive? That'd be kind of cool to like get something signed by her. She um, is. She is. Yeah. And she actually, I have a picture signed by her. Oh, yes. that's awesome. Yes. Perfect. That's awesome. I, I, I wrote her on Facebook and, um, you know, it's, it's not like personalized or anything like that, but she did sign it now to have the new wonder woman signed something that would be amazing 
like seriously yeah. but haven't you know she's got a lot more followers so yeah we'll <laughs> usually it, it, you definitely get uh a lot more um uh, a lot more odds, I think, the older you get with with mm-hmm. the the actors and the actresses for sure. Right. So yeah, maybe just yeah. hold out. You'll you'll get her eventually. Yes. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> eventually you will. Uh, yeah. All right. So we've been talking about superheroes, especially Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. We are going to do a superhero draft. Okay. Nick, actually, producer, cue the music. We're doing Ooh. a draft. We are doing a superhero draft. Uh, Jenny, we're going to give you first pick. I mean, I don't know. It's probably pretty obvious what you're going to choose, but maybe, maybe you're going to go a different direction. We'll see. So we're going to do two rounds. Well, maybe three. We'll see. We'll see how quick we go. And it's going to be a snake draft. So it's going to go Jenny and then Nick and then me is the order we'll go in. So Jenny, with the first pick in the Super Bowl, a uh, Super Bowl <laughs> superhero <laughs> draft, who are you taking? A uh, Wonder Woman. Okay. Wow. Shocker there. <laughs> That's kind of like uh, it's like Zion or like Wemby. Right. You know, you just yeah. you know yeah. who's going yeah. first. Yeah. Like a month yeah. ahead of time. Wow. All, All right, right, Nick, with the second pick in the draft, I'm gonna go with the self-made guy that doesn't actually have any superpowers. Iron Man, Tony Ooh. Stark, because he's just wow. a regular, he's just a regular dude, but he can hang with Thor and Hulk and everybody yeah. and, and win some fights. And all it really is is technology. So yeah, yeah, he's my guy. Oh. That it's we can so we great. can pick any universe, right? Any universe. Sure, yeah, okay. there's no rules here. It's okay. so great cool. that you said that, but you didn't say the the real, the goat self-made one, Nick. This is great because I'm going to, I just won the draft right here because I get two back to back. I'm literally taking the goats from both the universes. I am taking Superman. Wow. And then I'm following it up with Batman. Boom. Oh. Boom. Boom. Wow. Yep. Those like are the it. two. All right. All right. So they're off the board. All Superman right. So and Batman. Go I got to go. I got kind of a crazy one that not everybody's going to know, but I was really into as a teenager. Mm. Um, Spawn. I just Ooh. loved the artwork. And yeah. it was, I still have the the first edition comic book. I don't own many comic books, but that's one of them. you the and, first edition? Mm-hmm. Wow. I do. do you have it slapped? Yeah. No, actually, it's sitting. I I didn't know oh. anything about comic. I need somebody to educate me on how to how to handle that. But all right, um, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to yeah. find a comic book. <laughs> I know yes. everything about cards, but nothing about comics. So yeah. yeah, it's great. It's in good condition. I bought it as a kid for whatever two twenty nine or something like that, mm-hmm. and I was like, this art is so different. Like we're really like you know you're reading X Men and things like that, and this was just like really intense and dark kind of, and mm-hmm. I don't thought it was cool. So I'm going with Spawn. All, all right, right, Jenny. You're now up. I have to pick two. I have to pick two, right? Yeah, we'll go one more round. We're moving pretty quick. We'll do one okay. more round. You get two in a row. So I'll go with Black Panther. Mm. And then for his personality, and because I think it would be fun, Deadpool. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It, it would just make yeah. it interesting, if anything. It would be yeah. fun. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Deadpool is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> as long as you got the movie right there's a couple of Deadpool <laughs> appearances that aren't so right. good right yeah definitely. <laughs> all right Nick your last pick in the draft oh, man this is a tough one because it's like a group of people so I might be cheating if I have to pick one it's okay uh the Guardians of the Galaxy Th- that's my oh, you gotta pick uh, I know what you're saying yeah um, I mean yeah. so if I gotta pick one I'll pick Star Lord who's like the leader of the band mm-hmm. right like uh-huh. okay I like all them right. because he's always got uh, 70s music blaring. The oh, movies yes. great. The movies have the best soundtrack. Yes. Um, and uh, I don't know, just good vibes. They're funny. So mm-hmm. down with mm-hmm. that. Okay. All right. With the last pick in the superhero draft, our first ever superhero draft, Mr. Irrelevant for the draft, I'm going to go. Well, this is perfect. For the <laughs> Memorial Day, having a Air Force veteran on the show, I am picking Captain America. Wow! Yes, good yes. one. Perfect. Yeah. The yes. only the only other dude who's held Thor's hammer, right? Yes. That's Perfect. right. Good one. Mm-hmm. Good choice. Okay. All right. I All like right, it. Jenny. Thank thank you for going through that with us. That, <laughs> that was, was fun. cool. <laughs> yeah, was that was cool. That was cool. Uh, all right. So to wrap it up, we always like to you know let our guests talk about for for anybody who's listening 
How can they follow you? How can they reach out to you? How can they listen to your podcast? Okay. Um, so I'm on Instagram, Jenny Marie Sports Cards. Our podcast has its own Instagram, uh, the Every Other Week Cardboard Show. I'm on YouTube, not too big on YouTube yet, trying to get it up and running, but I don't enjoy it as much as Instagram. Um, and then, you know, obviously I have an eBay store, things like that, but that's all on my link and buy on Instagram. So uh, okay. let's get me to 3,000 followers so I can give away some of this cool stuff because okay. I actually had a bunch of people step up and provide some cool gifts. So I'm ready to give oh, it away. Oh, man, that's awesome. She's a great yeah. follow, everyone. Just please follow her. Very positive, very just awesome follow. Oh, thank you. Good stuff. All right. Okay. That's the pod. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yay.